right. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Legal Lounge here on CRN Digital Talk Radio, CRNTalk.com, streaming live coast to coast and around the world on CRNTalk.com. Also available in stunning high definition video on Facebook.com forward slash CRN Talk on CRN's custom built Roku channel, Tiki Live, and of course, CRNTalk.com. I'm joined as always by the one and the only, an active attorney, U.S. Army veteran, Juris Doctorate in Law, undergraduate degree in physics, and author of a book that has proven to be a guideline for the Supreme Court now and in the future. That book, America, an Illusion of Freedom, is available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and on iTunes. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Richard Nixon, the show that gives you the news you get nowhere else. How are you, Richard? Oh, I'm pretty good. Uh, I kind of relieved after the so-called debate, uh, but uh, about halfway through it, um, I stopped rooting for Trump and started feeling sorry for Biden because he was just, he was a mess. His his voice was very, very weak. He, he seemed so tired. And being confused is one thing, but uh, a couple times he said something, and then he mumbled, and then he said, "and and then we then we beat Medicare." <laughs> and Trump says, "I don't know what the hell he just said there, but uh, it doesn't make any sense to me." But they made a mistake by following that up with the next day when they had him on stage, and they had a teleprompter, and he was reading a speech. At that point, he got a 92 from as far as I'm concerned. And it just showed that the man could not function on his own. Um, he had to be, if he's left to, to himself, to his own devices, he can't function. So, the, the, it, it, Richard, I mean, there's no sugarcoating it. I mean, even if you are, you know, far left Democrat and a huge Biden supporter, you still think that he had a terrible night. It's been universally oh, accepted that it was one of the worst debate performances, if not the worst debate performances in the, probably the history of debate. You know, going, going, <laughs> back, going back to, you know, Cicero. Um, and the, interestingly enough, Richard, yesterday, the New York Times. Yes. Uh, the paper of record for many, especially Democrats, uh, the op-ed page said that he must step aside. Yeah. And uh, what that is going to do to Ms. Kamala, who knows? But uh, their, their groundswell has been growing amongst uh, Democratic Party insiders and the public at large that uh, this man is not fit to be president anymore. No, but you know what? <clears throat> Excuse me. We actually have something now that I think about it, uh, like they have in England. We've got the queen and the king and so on. They're, we know that they're only titular heads. They don't really control the government. However, they're, they're nice to look at on occasion and with all their glamour and so on. Uh, I don't know that there's anything wrong with um, Mr. Biden sitting around and other people telling him what to do. Uh, the question is, do we like their policies? And that's where it comes in. We, I think most of us, we don't like the policies. I don't care who is pulling his strings if, if he is a puppet. I don't care. That person or persons, they are absolutely wrong. Mr. Biden has said publicly in the wake of the disastrous debate performance that he will stay on the ballots. Um, but it would be quite interesting if perhaps some changes are made and we have an open convention. We have and he's going to have another debate? Oh, if President Trump would be, it would be wise for President Trump to not. Uh, well, let's talk about that right after this, uh, this okay, first break, sure. Richard. Stick around, you guys. We're here in the Legal Lounge, CRN Digital Talk Radio, CRNTalk.com. Richard is a veteran. Thank you for your service, Richard. And if any uh, vets out there uh, who knew Richard during his time of service in the United States Army or as a contractor in the Republic of South Vietnam, give us a call here at the office, and we want to connect you guys. Stick around. We'll be right back. You're experiencing pain, back pain, shoulder, elbow, or hand pain, pain from a sports injury. If so, schedule a visit with Dr. Michael Sheps, the leading expert in laser therapy for pain management. Call 310-873-4422 or go to drsheps.com. Experience Epic-T, the breakthrough laser therapy system that Dr. Sheps developed to make you pain-free in less time. Laser therapy is a non-invasive, safe, and effective in-office procedure that penetrates deep into your skin without damaging the tissue. It perfectly targets areas of pain to promote fast, natural healing. Relax your muscles, ease muscle spasms, joint stiffness, and arthritis pain while increasing blood circulation. For over 25 years, Dr. Sheps has helped Olympic athletes and sports enthusiasts alike get back in the game. Schedule your visit with Dr. Sheps at his Brentwood office in California. Call 310-873-4422 or visit drsheps.com. That's D-R-S-H-E-P-S.com. 310-873-4422. And we 
are back in the Legal Lounge. Once again, thank you so much for joining us here. You can watch along on Facebook, be either live or after the fact. Bruce is watching. Thank you, Bruce. And you can also check out all past and previous episodes on YouTube, also on Rumble. Find CRN Digital Talk on both those platforms. So, Richard, let's uh, kind of finish up with uh, this debate debacle. Yes. And uh, in my view, uh, President Trump should just... Not debate. I mean, it's the no, the I cat's see. out of the bag. The genie's out of the bottle. I mean, what what would it serve President Trump to do this? And you actually had an interesting, uh, uh, maybe perhaps strategy that President Trump maybe uh, he can be a little bit magnanimous about this, right? Yes, and actually he was. He did display some magnanimity uh, at the at the previous debate here um, by not hitting Biden as hard as he could have. Although he did make one comment, and he said. After Biden said, uh, and he jumbled up a bunch of words, and he finally said, and we got rid of Mer Medicare, and Trump went, I don't know what the hell he said there, but anyway, uh, Trump was very well behaved. I have to give credit to the proctors, though. They didn't push him. Uh, Biden called him a few names, but he kind of let it go over his head, and it's as though you— you kind of realize that, well, this poor guy is not all there. And for the people listening, Trump acted like a gentleman, and I think he gained some points there. Uh, and if he uh, if he's asked to debate again sometime in September, uh, at least Biden says he's ready to go, I would refuse based upon the point that I think, based upon what he s saw on the first debate— my debating him any further would really amount to elder abuse, and I just won't do it. Yeah, it's uh, it's a yeah, and it's not not great for anybody involved. All right, Richard, let's uh, talk about uh, something that's happening this coming week, uh, and of course, uh, just to, you know, for our audience out there, we will be discussing uh, the recent Supreme Court decisions involving Chevron, involving Fisher, and also Grants Pass. But we also want to kind of you know, have a little fun here because it is 4th of July week. Uh, in the coming days, we will be celebrating the 4th of July. It's my it's my favorite holiday, probably tied with Thanksgiving. Um, and we, we love the parades. Uh, as I've gotten older, the fireworks, not so much, but it's just a great way to celebrate the spirit of America and the spirit of 1776. Richard, what are we celebrating on the 4th of July and what does the 4th of July mean to you? Well, the 4th of July, other than what we did last week or so, the Declaration of Independence, uh, we also talked about the Pledge of Allegiance uh, kind of on par with uh, our pledging allegiance to the flag, and it came as kind of a surprise when I read it for the maybe the hundredth time. It struck me that we were pledging allegiance to the flag first and then our country. But anyway, in the same spirit, uh, patriotic spirit, uh, July 4th, 1776, uh, represented the date that we officially declared our freedom, our separation from England, Britain. Uh, and I'm just going to read a few words very briefly so we get a, a feel for exactly what Thomas Jefferson, a.k.a. TJ, friend, friend of the show. Friend of the show, absolutely. He says, and this is so generous and character defining, if you will. He says, when in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature's, nature and of nature's God entitle them. A decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. Now, I I defy anybody to, to find fault with that. That is such a gracious, uh, generous statement, uh, recognizing, number one, that we have a right to separate, number two, that the other people of the world have a right to know why we're separating. And third, for those who insisted that uh, many of our forefathers were uh, not believers in God, he mentions the word God here. So I assume he does recognize or did recognize God. Anyway, uh, then he goes on to something equally brilliant. 
we hold these truths to be self-evident. Now, as a former physicist, a student of science, there's so much, especially after Albert Einstein, the idea of relativity was everywhere. And so it strikes me that when a person says, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that he's not going to quarter any dispute. That's it. And it's such a bold, beautiful statement that he would make. Now, this is what he holds to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. That's a beautiful beginning. That they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, okay? Our creator gave us these rights. They are not transferable. They cannot be taken away. And they were not given to us by the government. They were given to us by the creator. That to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men. Again, the function of governments is to make sure that these rights are secured. Um, now, they're instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, and that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute a new government. So again, the, uh, Mr. Jefferson basically says that we are endowed with these rights that include life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and that we derive these just powers from the consent of the governed, and that the government, its function is to secure those rights, that is, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And so I think that that sums it up, that uh, Mr. Jefferson, as I think most patriots believe, that the Creator created these rights, and that the government's only function is to make sure that these rights are protected. Very well said, Richard. And indeed, it was it's quite a remarkable even still looking back because, uh, you know, most of these guys, TJ, friend of the show included, at that particular time before 1776, considered themselves English. Exactly. And, in order, and, and the ability to, you know, forge your destiny in a new world and also reject your country of origin because the country of origin was now taxing you to the Stone Age. This is a quote from TJ, uh, November 29th, 1775. Believe me, dear sir, there is, a, there is not in the British Empire a man who more cordially loves a union with Great Britain than I do. But by the God that made me, I will cease to exist before I yield to a connection on such terms as the British Parliament propose. And in this, I think I speak the sentiments of America. And that is where we're kind of the genesis of the Declaration of Independence, our great revolution, our great founding of our country, and our constitution lie. So very well said, Richard. Happy Fourth of July to everybody out there. Same here. Please don't uh, light off any illegal fireworks, and we will talk to you guys right after the break. Stay with us. Attention real estate investors, do you need cash immediately? If you own one or multiple rental properties, you can use your equity to get cash out fast. The best part is we don't need tax returns or even a good credit score. At America's Loan Source, we are not a bank and we don't have bank rules. We make the decisions to loan you money and there's no limit how much we can give you. Some clients have gotten as much as $500,000 or more within days. Use the money anyway you want if you own one rental property or a hundred and COVID has left you in a cash crunch we can help you turn your equity into fast cash call now for details and close in as little as 10 days and get the cash you need 800-353-1760 800-353-1760 800-353-1760 that's 800-353-1760 
The Katapali Beach Resort Association is reopening and is welcoming guests. While some properties are opening sooner than others, all properties are taking reservations and we look forward to your return. Go to kaanapaliresort.com for all the latest and up-to-date information on what's happening at Kaanapali Beach. That's Kaanapali Beach on the west side of Maui. There's so much to do. With a short drive from Maui Airport, we're on the tropical side of Maui and offer breathtaking scenery, an incredible array of delectable dining, and activity choices to meet your needs. We invite you to visit Kaanapali Beach Resort, but please be sensitive to the devastation that our beloved west side community has suffered. Lahaina is closed and will be for some time. Come to our open areas and support us as we adapt to a new way of life without our beloved Lahaina. Come visit the west side of Maui, Kaanapali Beach. Visit us online at kaanapaliresort.com. That's K-A-A-N-A-P-A-L-I resort.com. Trying to sell your old car? Instead, donate your vehicle to Heritage for the Blind. Pickup is free and your donation is tax deductible. Just call 1-800-785-9618. Heritage for the Blind accepts cars, vans, trucks, and boats, whether they run or not. Call right now and receive a free gift. Call 1-800-785-9618. Donate your car today. That's 1-800-785-9618. Then you will know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. John 832. Hi, this is Jeremy Dayton. Join me Sunday nights at 9 p.m. Pacific on Truth Radio, where we'll unpack the cultural baggage and discern what truth is amongst the sea of disinformation, the truth from God's perspective. With powerful guest testimonies, we'll also expose lies of the world created to spread fear and confusion. Matthew 634 says, Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Let's do that by seeking God's truth together. Sunday nights at 9 p.m. Pacific on CRN6. Once again, thank you so much for joining us here in the Legal Lounge. Make sure to reach out. You can info, email us at uh, info at crntalk.com or to Richard directly at pres37th at aol.com. And Richard, I believe you wanted to read from your fantastic book. I do. Uh, a lot of people are wondering what happened or to our so-called founding fathers, the people that wrote the Declaration of Independence, our Constitution. Uh, By the way, there's 13 years between the Declaration of Independence, 1776, and 1789 when we uh, enacted our Constitution, and then another two years, 1791, for our amendments. But in my book, I write something under what is called In Recognition. In recognition of those who signed a piece of paper called the Declaration of Independence, But of those men, five were captured and executed by the British for treason. Nine died fighting on the battlefield. Twelve lost everything they had to the British fires. Of those sage old men who authored the Constitution with the intent of creating and limiting the federal government to only those powers expressly granted to it and to retain or reserve all other powers to the states and their respective people, of all the others who fought and especially to those who were injured and died to preserve and maintain those freedoms granted by this Constitution, and of those who unwittingly remained reticent while our freedoms were being usurped, not by an enemy army but by our own Supreme Court, and of those who intend to reinstate those freedoms, lost and restored this nation to the status as envisioned by our founding fathers, a very limited federal government, and the vital rebirth of the powerful Tenth Amendment. This work has its sole purpose, has as its sole purpose, this renaissance. Very well, very nicely done. Very well yes. done, Richard. Thank you. Excellent, excellent. So let's talk a little bit about reverting the, uh, the power back to the people. Let's talk about the Chevron Doctrine. Richard, we talked about this case extensively when, during oral argument, even before, and the Supreme Court has ruled on the Chevron Doctrine. And what, just what briefly, Richard, and for a layman like myself, what was the Chevron Doctrine? And- well, as I understand it, um, that was a 1984 case, Chevron versus natural resources and so on. Uh, 
Under the doctrine, if Congress has not directly addressed the question at the center of a dispute, a court was required to uphold the agency's interpretation of the statute as long as it was reasonable. So what happens is, of course, we know Congress makes, makes laws. The executive branch under, under the president, its duty is to make sure that the laws are enforced. And the different cabinet members and people uh, in the executive branch, they make what are called regulations, which spin off the laws that Congress actually made. Now, if an ambiguity occurs within the agency or the executive branch, uh, up till now, you more or less, under the Chevron case, you more or less allowed the executive branch to resolve those ambiguities. But if somehow the, someone brought that case to the courts and the courts were called upon to resolve the ambiguity, the courts would have to defer to the agency's resolution of that ambiguity. Well, as of this decision, no more of that. The courts are more than capable of resolving the ambiguities, and therefore it will not be resolved by unelected officials in the executive branch. This case kind of started a lot with uh, some fishermen in Alaska. Yes. And these fishermen were so heavily regulated under Democratic uh, administrations because the regulations change as the winds change yes. who's over in the White House. And uh, due to uh, it's just insane regulations, these guys had to have some sort of monitor with them, a fish monitor. Correct. To make sure that they weren't fishing in, in uh, quote unquote, unrestricted waters right. based on environmental protection agency right. stuff. And not only did these guys have to uh, have these monitors on their boat looking over their shoulder, they'd also have to pay to their own pocket to have these monitors uh, with them in their boat up to $700 a day. That's what I've heard. In yes. some cases. And if these uh, monitors, you know, were putting regulations out there that these fishermen wanted to, you know, maybe even talk about or challenge, they weren't able to go to courts on that. That's right. And, and Richard, we're right up against the break because we're going to talk more about this after the break. But this case is very, very important when it comes to the regulatory state and uh, the power vested in the executive branch. And now it's vested, it seems, in the judicial branch. And there seems maybe a, a third solution here. Right. But we're going to talk about that right after the break. Stay with us. Savor the past and savor the glory days of Las Vegas. Enjoy 70 years of true Las Vegas history as four generations of family wait to greet you at the legendary bootlegger Italian Bistro. Wine, dine, and experience Mama Maria's award-winning original recipes while surrounded by original family photos and celebrity memorabilia. Enjoy piano artistry nightly with music from the Great American Songbook in our main formal dining room. The Bootlegger Italian Bistro, open 24-7, 7700 Las Vegas Boulevard South. In the entertainment capital of the world, the Bootlegger Italian Bistro, open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. 7700 Las Vegas Boulevard South, in the entertainment capital of the world. It's Vegas, baby. The old way of living with diabetes is a pain. You've got to remember to do your testing and always need to stick your fingers to test your blood sugar. The new way to live your life with diabetes is with a continuous glucose monitor. Apply a discrete sensor on your body and it continuously monitors your glucose levels, helping you spend more time in range and freeing you from painful finger sticks. If you are living with type 1 or type 2 diabetes and you use insulin or have had hypoglycemic events, you might be eligible for a CGM through your insurance benefits. U.S. Med partners with over 500 private insurance companies and Medicare. We offer free shipping, 90-day supplies, and we bill your insurance. Call us today for a free benefits check. 800-989-1361. 800-989-1361. 800-989-1361. That's 800-989-1361. 
If Ernest Hemingway was alive today, would he say this to you? Shakespeare, Mark Twain, Edgar Allan Poe, all great writers. And after reading your book, I simply must add you to the list. Wait, you don't have a book yet. So make a free call to Page Publishing. Their expert staff can help you turn your book idea into a real book, a masterpiece that could someday make the bestseller list in hard copy and digitally all across the world. Page Publishing can help you completely take your idea for a book, write it, and publish it. So if you want to join the ranks of some of the most famous authors in the world, call now for a free information kit. Turn your book idea into publishing gold. Make a free call right now to Page Publishing. 800-378-3212. 800-378-3212. 800-378-3212. 800-378-3212. That's 800-378-3212. Are you looking for a natural health solution to improve your mind and body? Greska's Carbon 60 is an all-natural oral dietary supplement that supports your body's optimal health and performance. Studies show that Carbon 60 helps eliminate inflammation, often the root of your health issues. One carbon-rich serving provides your body with a powerful antioxidant to help remove toxins and free radicals. Carbon 60 helps protect your cells from damage and promotes cellular regeneration. Experience the power of Greska's Carbon 60 and say goodbye to pain, inflammation, and fatigue. Call anytime at 720-600-6040, 720-600-6040, or visit c-60.com. That's c-60.com. Greska's Carbon 60. Go to c-60.com. And we are back in the Legal Lounge. Thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. We're talking about this recent decision from the Supreme Court. This is known as the Chevron Doctrine. The actual case itself is Loper Bright Enterprises versus Raimundo, and also Relentless Incorporated versus Department of Commerce, which was these cases were combined. And as you said, Richard, this takes power away from the executive branch regu- regulatory state and puts power towards the courts. However, there's one branch of government that's not mentioned necessarily in this uh, statute, right? Yes. Well, again, uh, the executive, excuse me, the legislature is the one responsible for making the law in the first place. And now they're in the middle or the midst of resolving some ambiguity that um, the legislature committed, frankly. And now the issue is how do we resolve that ambiguity once it gets over to the executive branch and it's being handled by people who have no accountability to the people which is precisely why Mr. Trump while he was president for those four years did everything he could to make a number of (laughs) uh, regulations disappear. He didn't like regulations, again, because he thought every law that the president is expected to guarantee its performance should be a law that was passed by Congress. The Constitution, Article One of the Constitution says, all law must be made by Congress. It doesn't give any lawmaking ability to the Supreme Court or any other court. So the bottom line is, This question was beyond that. This question was already in court, and the question became whether or not the executive branch making decisions by people who were unelected and not accountable to us had the authority to resolve that ambiguity or must it be done by the courts, the 
Article Three courts, if you will, and the Supreme Court said it's got to be done by us. So the the. The administrative state's position here about the Chevron doctrine was like, hey, you know, our regulatory agencies, we know what we're doing because exactly. we're involved in the day-to-day -day all the time. And they say, you know, it's, uh, it's it's easier for us to figure out what the rules are because we make the rules. Sure. Uh, Roberts, re Roberts then rejected any suggestion that agencies rather than courts are better to suited to determine what ambiguities in federal law might mean, even when those ambiguities involve technical or scientific questions that fall within the agency's area of expertise. Roberts emphasized Congress expects courts to handle technical, technically statutory questions, and courts have also the benefit of briefing the parties and friends of the court. And Richard, in our little prep session before the show today, I think both you and I agree that Congress actually would probably be just as well suited to bring in experts to decide what these ambiguities are, right? That's exactly right. Now, I, I don't think I'll be rereading what you just said, Mike. I think it's a different part here. But the EPA, Roberts noted, directs courts to decide legal questions by applying their own judgment and therefore makes very clear that agency interpretation of statutes, like agency interpretations of the Constitution, are not entitled to deference. Under the a APA, Roberts concluded, it thus remains the responsibility of the court to decide whether the law means what the agency says. And let's think about that for a second. Are we going to take the, one of the three branches of our government and basically ship it out and let, if you will, a fourth branch, namely the administrative people, the so-called deep state, and let them decide issues of constitutional weight? I don't think so. And that's all that Chief Justice Roberts and the court and Mr. Trump is doing as he's dragging this issue back to where it belongs, namely those people, in this case, the courts of this country, they are at least somewhat responsible to the people, which is what Mr. Trump wanted. So Kagan uh, read her uh, a summary of her dissent from the bench. And usually when justices read their dissents from the bench, yes. it, it means they're not happy. Uh, she said uh, uh, she, she stressed for 40 years the answer to the question has generally been the agencies uh, with good reason. Agencies are more likely to have the technical and scientific expertise to make such decisions. By overruling the Chevron doctrine, Kagan concluded the court has created a jolt to the legal system. And she also pushed back against the majority suggestion that overruling the Chevron doctrine would introduce clarity into judicial review of agency interpretations. Yes, and she can expect a few more jolts uh, because of this new membership, uh, appropriate conservative membership. These people that now uh, house the U.S. Supreme Court know how to read. They read the Constitution. They apply the Constitution as written. And frankly, that's what the liberals in this country are afraid of. If, they, if, the, if the Supreme Court actually applies the words in the Constitution as written, they're pretty much rendered powerless. Uh, briefly, before we hit this next break, in about two minutes, we have uh, another case we want to talk about. We're going to kind of take this a little bit out of order. This one is regarding homelessness. This has to do with this, the case involving Grants Pass, Oregon, uh, which uh, the, the, some said that uh, enforcing a camping ban uh, to clean the streets of the homeless people was a violation of the Eighth Amendment, cruel and unusual punishment, Richard. Yes. Your thoughts? Well, only that it's been misused. I think we all agree to that. And Mr. Excuse me, Justice Thomas said that it's it was misguided in the first place. Uh, there really is no Eighth Amendment violation here by simply saying that. Uh, well, first of all, uh, writing for the majority, Justice Gorsuch contended that the Eighth Amendment, which bans cruel and unusual punishment, serves many important functions, but it does not authorize federal judges to dictate this nation's homelessly, homelessness policy. Instead, he suggested such a task should fall to the American people. Um, I found as interesting, I think Justice Sonia Sotomayor said basically, though, that the majority's ruling focuses almost exclusively on the needs of local government and leaves the most vulnerable on our city society with an impossible choice either stay awake or be arrested. Yeah, I don't know if uh, that argument necessarily <laughs> holds water. We're going to talk more about this and, of course, and also the Fisher case right after the break. Stay with us.
experiencing pain, back pain, shoulder, elbow, or hand pain, pain from a sports injury? If so, schedule a visit with Dr. Michael Sheps, the leading expert in laser therapy for pain management. Call 310-873-4422 or go to drsheps.com. Experience Epic T, the breakthrough laser therapy system that Dr. Sheps developed to make you pain-free in less time. Laser therapy is a non-invasive, safe, and effective in-office procedure that penetrates deep into your skin without damaging the tissue. It perfectly targets areas of pain to promote fast, natural healing. Relax your muscles, ease muscle spasms, joint stiffness, and arthritis pain while increasing blood circulation. For over 25 years, Dr. Sheps has helped Olympic athletes and sports enthusiasts alike get back in the game. Schedule your visit with Dr. Sheps at his Brentwood office in California. Call 310-873-4422 or visit drsheps.com. That's D-R-S-H-E-P-S.com, 310-873-4422. Are you ready to make a difference for the environment while helping the visually impaired at the same time? Then donate your vehicle to Heritage for the Blind today by calling 800-785-9618. Every donated vehicle will either be properly recycled in an eco-friendly manner or given a new life through reuse. Donating your vehicle is easy. Simply call 1-800-785-9618 and Heritage for the Blind will do the rest. They'll even arrange for your vehicle to be picked up at no cost to you. And for a limited time, when you donate your car, you'll receive a $200 restaurant voucher and a two-night, three-day hotel stay at one of 50 locations. Call 800-785-9618 right now to schedule your tax-deductible vehicle donation and make a positive impact on the environment while helping others. Heritage for the Blind, where every car donation counts and every person makes a difference. Call 1-800-785-9618 now. And we are back in the Legal Lounge, CRN Digital Talk Radio, CRNTalk.com. Just to wrap things up on this Grants Pass case, this is going to have massive implications nationwide because if you've been driving around your local town and wondering why you're seeing so many homeless people on the streets, it's because of this case. It's because you couldn't, any state couldn't have any, or municipality or city for that matter, could not have any local ordinance or law in their books banning people from sleeping on the sidewalk because of this case. And uh, Mayor Bass here in Los Angeles says this is going to be disastrous here in Los Angeles because because we don't have a camping ban on the books in the city of L.A. And so it just means that people who live in, in any city that does have a camping ban, sleep on the sidewalk ban and whatnot, are just going to come to L.A. County. Yeah. Not great. Not great. All right, Richard, let's move on to the uh, this Fisher case. This is a case that I think is going to have huge implications for a lot of the January 6th people, individuals who were arrested and charged with obstruction of a, of a, of a federal procedure, an official procedure, a charge that could get you up to 20 years, Richard. And uh, the this had Kentaji Jackson Brown actually joined with the conservatives on this case. Yeah. Well, she figures this guy will get nailed otherwise anyway. That's how it concludes. She says, well, yeah, I can't go along with uh, the minority here in this case, but I think Fisher's going to get his uh, worth anyway. But anyway... Um, the Supreme Court on Friday threw out the charges against a former Pennsylvania police officer who entered the U.S. Capitol during the January 6, 2021 um, milieu. Uh, by a vote of 6 to 3, the justices ruled that the law that uh, Mr. Fisher was charged with violating, which bars obstruction of an official proceeding, applies only to evidence tampering, such as destruction of records or documents in official proceeds. Now, the problem is the way that this uh, statute is uh, just opposed, if you will, uh, the first part is 1512C1, which bars 
which bars tampering with evidence with the intent to impair the object's integrity or availability for use in an official proceeding. And basically, it only applies to destruction of records or documents. Now, Mr. Fisher was tried for 1512C, which claims that it makes it a crime to otherwise obstruct, influence, or impede any official proceeding. The Supreme Court, I heard the, the arguments, and the Supreme Court felt that C2, which is the one he was charged under, was far too broad because uh, if that's true, then part one, C1, it really is redundant. There's no point. If, if you're saying that if he violates one, he gets 20 years. But if he does any kind of violating, he gets 20 years. There's no point in mentioning one. So anyway, what the court basically said in this case is that if there's some kind of uh, obstruction, but it's outside somewhere or does not result in any kind of destruction or changing or alteration of documents, then that upset, if you will, that which was caused on January 6th, is simply not chargeable under this statute, and therefore Mr. Fisher will not be facing 20 years. And this particular statute, and Justice uh, Kataji Brown-Jackson brings this up in her argument, this is a relatively new statute, and it was a statute with a very specific intended purpose. This statute was uh, under the Sarbanes-Oxley Act of 2002, uh, which was shortly in the in the wake of the Enron scandal, because yes. what was happening with the Enron is, well, these guys that worked for Enron were shredding a bunch of documents, and uh, this statute, was uh, which criminal is, quote, altering, destroying, mutilating, or concealing a record, document, or other object, or attempting to do so with the intent to impair the object's integrity or availability for the use of an official proceeding or per those following precision, otherwise obstructing, influencing, impeding, or an, an official proceeding. This, this statute was written in a time to address a specific thing. Yes. And the dude, Mr. Fisher, who was charged under the statute, didn't do the specific thing in the statute. That's correct. Again, they tried to... Um well, what's the word now, Mike? Uh, bootstrap it into saying, well, okay, but Section A does talk about the what you just read, the destruction of records. But then it also goes on in Section 2 and says, but any other uh, kind of destruction, da-da-da-da-da. Well, that any other would include people walking in the hallways, let's say in the Supreme Court building, making noise and causing some kind of destruction or uh, confusion, uh, when the court is in session, that that might actually cause this person in the hallway to actually, if you if you define it very loosely, to go to jail for about 20 years. And the court said, no, that's that's too wide of a examination. We we won't extend it that far. Uh, Justice Jackson sided with Fisher's, like exactly you said, uh, it was kind of a surprise, her theory. She's the only former public defender in the current court, and in the judiciary broadly, you're far more likely to find former prosecutors on the bench. So it stands to reason that she understands firsthand the downsides of government getting creative with criminal statutes, as they did in this particular yes. case. So uh, congratulations to, to Judge uh, Jackson for, you know, looking, looking at the law rather than looking at the ideological way when the, the wind is blowing. All right. So we are, we'll be right back right after this next break and i just want to tease this because if you're a taxpayer do you have standing to sue the government here in the state of california for illegally spending your money or a way that you think is illegal we're going to talk about that right after the break stick with us If you've been injured in an accident that was not your fault, listen up. We have legal professionals standing by to answer your questions for free. Call now and find out if you have a case and how much it's potentially worth. Call 800-745-9090. I'm here with spokesman John Wolf. So, John, tell everyone listening who should call right now. Well, Maria, first off, thank you for having me here. It's always nice to answer the listeners' questions. 
Now, as far as who should call in, anyone who's been injured in an accident and think you deserve compensation, give us a call right now. 800-745-9090. You'll find out if you have a case and how much it's potentially worth. Thanks, John. You heard it, folks. Take advantage of this opportunity and call now. 800-745-9090. Advertisement sponsored by Legal Help Center may not be available in all states. No more mold. No more damage. No more outdated old bathroom. No more slipping and hurting. No more stress. Make your ordinary bathroom extraordinary for only $99 per month. New shower, new door, new tub, new wall, new anti-slip technology. Be stress-free. Call 800-973-5411. BCI Bath and Shower is made in America for the highest quality. Ask about our military and senior discounts. Your dream bathroom in as little as one day. First 50 callers save $1,500 on a never clear glass treated door. Call now for free premium color upgrades. 800-973-5411. Call BCI Bath and Shower, the leader in bathroom remodeling. Be smart, safe, and stay a step ahead of inflation with our interest-free financing options. Call 800-973-5411. Love your bathroom with free upgrades. Call 800-973-5411. 800-973-5411. You order a glass of your favorite Cabernet, fresh asparagus, hollandaise on the side, a filet, medium rare. You unfurl your napkin with a flare, close your eyes, and prepare to listen. Ah, there it is. The sweet music you long to hear. The sizzle. The sizzle of a Ruth's Chris steak. The most magnificent corn-fed prime beef, broiled to perfection at 1,800 degrees. Some call it a sizzle. We call it an anthem. As the waiter approaches, you think, is this one mine or that one? Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. Like Ruth always said, life's too short to eat anywhere else. Make a reservation online at rootschris.com or by calling 800-544-0808. And we are back in the Legal Lounge. Once again, thank you so much for joining us here. Final segment here. Richard, you uh, brought this to my atten attention about how the crucial role of taxpayers and how taxpayers can defend democracy. What's going on with this one? Well, frankly, this came as kind of a surprise to me because I guess I was concentrating, concentrating too much on federal law. But in general, what this article says, and I'm glad to see that it's published in the Daily Journal, it says, for more than a century, California taxpayers have had the power to sue public agencies and officials to fight corruption and other unlawful activities. But now the state high court will soon hear a case, Raju, R-A-J-U, versus Superior Court, that could dramatically curtail what has been indispensable in the public's toolbox for holding government officials and agencies accountable to the people they serve. Very briefly... Federal courts require a plaintiff to establish that they were directly harmed by a particular policy or action. And if they're seeking an injunction, they need to show that they will suffer harm in the future if the policy is not remedied. Recent U.S. Supreme Court decisions have made that already demanding requirement even more difficult. And further, not so with taxpayer lawsuits. Since 1909, the Code of Civil Procedure 526 has granted any individual or corporation that pays taxes broad standing to seek injunctive relief against illegal government expenditures and waste. So, uh, Mike, you can take off with that if you'd like, because it looks like the states are possibly going to lose some of that authority. 
Or the, the taxpayer, I should the ta Yes, exactly. This seems like uh, that's if they make a change to this statute, to this public uh, code of civil procedure 526, which it seems like the state government wants to do, this would definitely defang any sort of recourse that taxpayers had to take, you know, certain officials to court if they're engaged in corruption or engaged in any sort of you know, impropriety when it comes to public money. Yes, and I would say trying to get rid of 526 in self, itself is illegal and probably corrupt. So out you, all you guys out there from California and other states, pay attention to whether or not you have authority to sue your own government if you're a taxpayer uh, for things that they're doing that are illegal. And the ACLU, who usually we, we don't have nice things to say about, they jumped in here too. The ACLU uh, of Northern California used taxpayer standing to challenge San Mateo's Superior Court practice of automatically imposing a $300 charge for every time someone misses a payment or court deadline in their traffic case. Right. These so-called civil assessments were often six to eight times greater than the base fine for the traffic infraction itself. So this seems like uh, this, uh, this particular uh, ability for a taxpayer to bring a lawsuit, to have standing to bring a lawsuit as an injured uh, seems a good way to keep the government in check and uh, it's no wonder that the federal government does not allow you to do this because that's correct it seems to me that that would uh, definitely affect not only their ability to, to conduct business behind closed doors but also their bottom line as well so richard we're out of time here i just want to uh, to wish you a very happy fourth of july well same to you and uh, i hope you enjoy a nice barbecue and i've got my flag all set to go yeah and uh, it's not the biggest one and it's it's got 50 flag uh, stars on it. I do actually have at home a 48 star flag that goes way back to what before Hawaii and Alaska. I mean 1956, I'd want to say. Yeah, it would be in back in the 40s or 50s, and it's showing some wear. So I don't think I want to put it out there and get torn up anymore. In fact, I'm looking to see where I can have that flag repaired. As, a, as opposed to just replacing it with a new one. Yeah, because, I mean, that's a collector's item. We Absolutely. Have one to go about that long. All right, folks, uh, as I mentioned before, I'll pass in previous sessions. This broadcast are available on YouTube and on Rumble, also as a podcast at crntalk.com forward slash podcaster. And we'll see you guys next week here in the Legal Lounge. Happy Fourth of July.